guys so this is 9th and uh, I'm here again in the Philadelphia after six years we're on route 95. and we are moving on 95 highway 95 north, north towards, Philadelphia. towards Philadelphia and it's about to like we are, we have almost arrived here I can even show you some of the old bridges here uh, it's one behind this building actually it's called Ben Ben Franklin Ben Franklin yeah bridge Benjamin Franklin Benjamin Franklin was uh, the guy he was an inventor and, and this is the bridge actually so Benjamin Franklin was a guy who invented uh, or, or who, who worked to, de uh, to develop the constitution of the United States and he's, uh, he's part, part of it, not, yeah. he's not the only one. Yeah. There's a lot of people involved. Exactly. So uh, Chris says there were a lot of people who worked on the constitution but Benjamin Franklin was another guy who worked on and he's, he's also considered as a found founder of founding father, founding father of United the States. United States and and the Constitution. You can see the name of the Benjamin Franklin, uh, and uh, it's a bridge uh, named after him in the Philadelphia. It's a uni It's an old bridge actually. Why uh, we have we are, we are visiting? Why we decided to visit uh, Philadelphia? Because uh, Philadelphia has uh, history behind uh, uh, when it comes to discussing the constitutional and institutional history of United States so it has a lot of uh, history so yeah and uh, uh, our aim actually is today to visit Independence uh, oh. Hall yeah where, where the Constitution of the United States was written uh, back in like 1700 or something or 1600 something so we'll we'll find the exact date uh, and then we'll also visit the Liberty Bell uh, it's uh, again an, a, a very important place to visit and uh, you know that uh, whenever I'm I'm visiting some different places new places so my also aim is to show you people to or make you people to aware about different constitutional struggles and uh, the constitutional histories of different countries and the United States is definitely a great great country uh, and uh, we have seen that a lot of uh, modern democracies they were actually evolved uh, after uh, the development of uh, constitution of different countries including the United States and uh, the Great Britain so we are gonna go to uh, Constitution Center so there we will get more in history uh, and uh, information about the Constitution of the United States. So I'm really excited to be here. I'll show you some of the uh, some of some parts of the uh, the Philadelphia city. I'm sure it's going to be very exciting for you as well. Oh, so they would put the ink and then the paper and then they would do this. Wow, so uh, definitely something that. Uh, That's how they made the newspaper. Exactly, uh, it's it's very important. I think my my students need to know about this because we, as a journalism student, we actually uh, read about all these history of printing. Yes. So this is actually one of the tool that was used back in like. Uh, 1700s and 1600 so this was one of the way of printing you can see the the entire script in the reverse order so what they would do they would put the paper over it can you do can you do that that how so you put the the letters the way you want them and mm -hmm. then you put the paper on top like right this, and then you just do this like and you would put the ink okay and can you show this paper now well, this one has been so, done so many times, but um, okay. it's not clear. But and we're not reusing real ink here. True. But they true. would have put ink on it. It would be very crisp. Great, great. 
so this was one of the way that how printing was but they were doing printing in the old times some more see the in congress Ju july 4 1776 state of america says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal so it talks about equality yes so it's an important uh, human right that equality should be up upheld yes all men are created equal we have it in our power to begin the world over again yeah because they have independence from england true all right so this is again something very important uh, when we discuss the first wave of feminism Susan Anthony she is wonderful lady she was wonderful lady and she fought for the uh, voting rights of women and voting right is one of the first uh, rights that women started to struggle and you can see uh, it's dated July 4 1876 Susan B Anthony disrupted the ceremony on Independence Square to present the declaration of rights of the women of the United States in supporting women's voting rights So here are some of the more struggles you can see Independence Square So guys we are here at the Independence Hall Let me show you around the house mm -hmm. which would have been the president's house before Washington D was the DC was the capital Philadelphia was the capital wow and I, I believe that's right you shouldn't ask me anything because I don't okay. know everything we can maybe uh, read some of the history on the plex this was the house yet these bills had everything to do with black people they intertwine other men's fresh new liberties with our enslavement at once these founding documents managed to control and to ignore us. Our petition states, therefore, that if the Bill of Rights or the Declaration of Independence are to have any meaning at all together on one This is what this space looked like. And originally it was a house. Um, 190 High Street. It's the finest property in the city. It included a large walled garden, stables, back buildings, an ice house, and novelty in the 1790s. It was the residence of Washington in High Street, Philadelphia. This is what they call this picture. Right. In the 1790s, the, when Philadelphia was the temporary capital of the United States, this was the site of the executive offices and residence for the first two presidents of the United States of America. From 1790 to 1797, President George Washington, members of his extended family, his secretaries and the enslaved, indentured, and free household servants lived here. From 1797 to 1800, President John Adams and his wife Abigail lived here with their servants, none who, of whom were enslaved. His Indian name was Thay, I can't pronounce it, it's that Thayendangia is a famous Mohawk leader of the Iroquois Nation. Washington also invited Chickasaw delegation, including Chiefs Pio Mingo, George Colbert, and William Glover, to the House to discuss future relations with the United States. Native American chiefs, including the Seneca Chief Red Jacket, met with Washington in the state dining room right here in this space. Right. So that means uh, George Washington was trying to 
uh, work with the natives that were here at that time. So a lot of people wonder if George Washington had slaves. He did. He had slaves. Um, but it, this is a story here that's telling um, he inherited them when he married his wife, Martha. Um, she was married previously, and her previous husba husband was named Daniel Custis. And when he died, she became a widow, but she, she inherited all of the property, the estate, including the slaves. And so when George Washington married her, he also became the manager of them. Okay. And when, when did he free them? Um, he, it says that in his will, George Washington directed that these people would be freed upon his wife's death. But, in fact, Martha freed them in 1801, prior to her own death. Great. She made sure that they had freedom. So, this shows that uh, uh, from the beginning, when the U.S. was uh, like uh, created or the Constitution was uh, written, so this debate was going on that what will be the what future of uh, uh, slave people, because slavery is uh, against, and which is, again, like written in the Constitution of uh, uh, you say that everyone is equal, so yes. there is no space for slavery in, 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 in this country. Um, the idea behind the Constitution is that all men are created equal, hmm. and that you know, we should not have slavery, but in fact there was slavery in the country, and it was something they were trying to fight against, and we ended up having a civil war over it, and the civil war was the beginning of the end of slavery. Um, so at the end of the Civil War, uh, President Lincoln had his address to the country at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and he talked about freedom of all people. And so because of his work and, and everything leading up to that point, even the war, many people were killed. Um, they were fighting over slavery and taxes and all kinds of things. Um, because of their work, we, we got to a point in our history where we, we outlawed slavery. Thank you. Between the North and South. I'm sure this is uh, the old... Uh, uh, old old structure, the remnants of the old structure, where this building that we saw in this uh, picture. So they have tried to keep the old structure as well underneath this uh, uh, this this independent hall. President Adams and his wife Abigail had always refused to own human beings. So when they moved here, new and gay, not always careful enough. Mm -hmm. There's a timeline of the slavery. So, what is Mason Dixon uh, area? So, it's a division between the North and the South. Uh, the well, northern states, they are, were abolishing slavery and, and uh, allowing uh, colored people bricks. to be free to and live freely. Drown. South of the Mason-Dixon, they were enslaved. He had, like, that and was so the Union, which is the governmental about. army, then was fighting was against second, the southern um, southern rebels who were fighting too. to keep slavery because they, they used them for their industry of cotton and they were using people to pick crops. Nobody knows.
Continental Army. Who do you think? Well, John Adams suggested a man up from Virginia to be the new general in chief. Who was that? Who did they vote for? George Washington. Right? Everyone in the room voted for George Washington to be the new general in chief. So he leaves Philadelphia and he leads the war effort against the British. This was a war group. They created the army, the navy, and the marine corps in this room. But you can also call it the peace room. They tried to make peace with the king by sending him olive branch petitions. But the king rejected it. The king was becoming more of a tyrant. Something had to give. Now this book was published early in 1776. And I think all the Congress of the Second Congress read this book. You know what it's called? It, it was written by Thomas Paine, and it's called Common Sense, and it is very influential, stating that we should separate from the motherland, from Great Britain, and become a new country. So now independence is in the air in this room. Independence. Separation. So here's what happened next. It's June of 1776. Another Virginian, Richard Henry Lee. He gets up and he makes a resolution in front of the Congress that these united colonies, all 13, ought to be United States, 13 United States, free and independent states. So then they decide, well, we need something written to support that, the Declaration. Then they appoint John Adams from Massachusetts, five men to write it. 
John Adams from Massachusetts. Maybe you're from one of these former colonies. Roger Sherman from Connecticut. Robert Livingston from New York. My favorite, Benjamin Franklin from the great state of Pennsylvania. Hometown favorite. But the man who really writes it sat right here, right around right here. This is his walking stick. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Right, Thomas Jefferson wrote it. He actually drafted it. He wrote it in his boarding room a couple blocks from here. It's brought into this assembly room, and the resolution and the declaration are debated. And on July 2nd, 1776, the Congress votes for the resolution, Richard Henry Lee's resolution to become the United States of America. Well, of course, we celebrate independence on July, what? Fourth. It takes two more days for this to get into its final form. Two more days. So when this is finalized on July 4th, and when this is adopted, that's approved by the Congress, that's when the United States is officially created in this room. July 4th, 1776, when the Congress votes for this. The Declaration of Independence, and this is how it looked after it was printed that night. And we have one of the few copies left in the world that's still around next door. If you just turn left and go to the Great Essentials, you can see one of the original prints. What's missing from a photograph that you may have seen of the Declaration of Independence? The signatures. Right. So it becomes official the following month. Official meaning it's engrossed, it's written on parchment. The men of the Congress get up from their chairs, walk up in front of John Hancock, and sign, dip their quills in the inkstand, and sign the Declaration of Independence. It's one of the greatest documents ever written about democracy and human rights. Thomas Jefferson writes that all men are created equal, and they have the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And in order to secure these rights, we need a government of the people. We can't get that under the king of Great Britain. So we have to separate and create and form a new country, the United States of America. And the men pledged their lives to this cause. So if we didn't win the war, the men who signed this document probably would have been hung for treason. But we did win the war. And it wasn't easy. The following year, the following year, uh, Great Britain captures the capital. They capture Philadelphia. They take over the state house, this building. And the British soldiers sleep there. And they destroy things. They probably burn the furniture to stay warm in the winter. The George Washington is nearby, Valley Forge. But eventually, with France coming to our assistance, France and Holland, and George Washington's persistence, we eventually win the war. Before the war is won in this room, our first constitution is signed. It's called the Articles of Confederation. And that's what it was, a loose confederation of the 13 states, a very weak government. After the war is won, they barely had enough power to raise money for things. Uh, they were very ineffective. Even Washington's troops were denied their pay. So something had to be done to fix the government. Who do you think they called back to this room to be president of a convention and sit in that chair, not over there? George Washington comes back. George Washington that chair, and ladies and gentlemen, that chair is original. Yeah, it was made after the British. Now we know George Washington sat in that chair for four months during 1787, the spring and the summer. And 
with the shades drawn and the door shut in secret, a miracle happened in this room. Even Washington admitted it. It was a miracle. This is it. We have played it. Play this. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, this is the miracle. Symbol of it, anyway. What did they create in four months? The, con the Constitution, the brand new government. They did away with the other government. And they, in four months, they created a brand new government, which we still have today. Amazing. It says, we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. That's true. This is it. This is what they created, and we still have this government today. It has three parts. The executive, or the president of the United States, the legislative, where they make the laws, the, the Congress of the United States, and the judicial, the, where they interpret the laws, uh, the, so the Supreme Court. And it's got a great structure, a good structure. It uh, has a balance of powers between the three branches and a balance of powers between the federal government and the states. And that structure helps to ensure that the rights Jefferson wrote about, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are secure. So the two events are related. Now, when they were signing this document, men like Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, uh, they signed it on September 17, 1787, and Ben Franklin was 81 years old. He kept looking at the back of George Washington's chair. It is hard to see, but this is a painting of a half sun. And when they were signing the Constitution, Ben Franklin remarked that he was wondering whether or not the sun that's part of the chair was a rising sun or a setting sun. So here you can see it up close, but it's back of that chair. What do you think Benjamin Franklin thought? Rising or setting? <laughs> right, correct, rising sun. Because we have a new government, a strong government, and rising expectations. So that chair, that original chair of Washington's chair is called the rising sun chair. Rising sun chair. So Ben Franklin made those famous comments when he signed the Constitution in this room, September 17, 1787. When the Constitution was approved by enough states, then the government went into effect. And you may want to see the capital of the United States before Washington, D.C. It's also just to the left. It's called Congress Hall. Invented the Franklin open stove. Interesting. Established first American magazine. Founded the Pennsylvania Hospital. He was the first to utilize electricity. Those are uh, I wanted to actually show you the graves of two great uh, leaders in the history of the United States: Benjamin Franklin and. Uh, and Deborah, his wife. his wife. So it's an old cemetery here. You can see. Unfortunately, it's closed. I couldn't go inside, but I could uh, finally locate this uh, grave, which is a very historic grave, by the way.